Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to TVB's next women's executive coaching session on leadership skills. I'm Abby Auerbach, Chief Communications Officer at TVB and your moderator today. We hope you, your families, and your colleagues are all safe and well. And we're delighted with the enormous response to Next Women, and we want to thank Wide Orbit for generously underwriting the program and your registrations to today's event. Next slide, please. Here's how our Zoom interactive session is going to work today. And please bear with us because like many of you, we're kind of new to this. Your mics are all muted, but please, please ask questions. You can type questions to me, Abby Auerbach, using the chat button. And I promise I won't identify who's asking the questions. So shy questions are welcome or raise your hand by clicking participants and selecting the raise hand function. And I will call on you and Vic, who's our TVB host today, will unmike, unmute your mic. <laughs> We're going to conduct a one question poll also to hear what's on your minds. And I'll call for that and it will pop up. It's very, very easy to click and respond. If you have technical difficulties, please send a chat message to the TVB host. The session will be recorded and available to all of the registrants today within 24 to 48 hours. So you'll be able to listen to some of your favorite advice again. Next slide, please. Today, I'm joined by two fabulous executive coaches, Winnie De Silva and Terry Yaffe. You'll notice that both of them have given us their contact information, and that's really for you, because each of them have very generously offered to provide a free pro bono coaching session for any of the next women participating in today's call. So we'll show you again at the end of the session, everybody's email address, but please keep that in mind because it's a wonderful follow-up to today's conversation. So let's get started. I'm going to open the conversation today with a warm-up question for the coaches. But before we jump into that, Vicki, please put up the poll. Here we go. It's one question. How have your leadership skills and style been affected during these stressful times? Please select the feeling you are experiencing most. I feel unfocused, vulnerable, courageous, or energized and challenged. I'm going to give you a three, two, one. Okay, Vic. Please take down the poll. So here's the warm up question, coaches. Are you ready? Yes, we're ready. Great. Yeah. Terry and Winnie, there's an interesting saying I don't mind stress, it's distress that undoes me. How do we perceive stress versus distress, and what can we do about them? Winnie, would you like to lead us off on that? Sure, yeah, thanks, Abby. Um, it's interesting that you use the word perceived because I think that's the main thing that we want to focus on when we think about stress. So when we think about stress, sometimes in the poll, it can energize us. Sometimes when we think about stress, it can sort of derail us and help us to not be focused. Um, but what really matters is your perception. Is your perception that you have the resources that you need to overcome and work through this time of stress? If you do, then you probably feel positive about it and feel energized by it. If you don't feel like you have the resources you need to move through this time of stress, it will probably be a moment where you feel unfocused uh, and, and distrust, distressed. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of how I see uh, this time of stress and how you might be able to understand where you are in that. I think that's really interesting. And of course, gathering those resources, even if they aren't instantly available to you in this new environment, would be very instrumental in affecting stress versus just stress feelings. Absolutely. Absolutely. Terry, what are you thinking about that? Yeah, I think Winnie kind of said it all in um, her thought's about stress, you stress versus distress. And um, I think it's a mindset in a lot of ways. Um, if you want to look at it as how, again, with the resources, how can I 
be positive? How can I find ways to, again, be energized, to be positive, to set priorities and goals for myself? Then you're taking control of your own stress. Distress is you get into this spiral of, oh my God, what's going on? And that's the mindset that has grabbed hold of you and has given you that perception. So mm -hmm. the ch it's all about choice. Which one of these do you really want to choose for yourself, especially in these times? That's very helpful. So I have the poll results now. Um, and very interestingly, 36% of you feel unfocused, 7% mm -hmm. vulnerable, 9% courageous, and 49% energized and challenged. It says a lot wow. about the women that are on the call today. Yeah, that's, so we're gonna wow. start off, yeah, we're gonna start with a conversation about feeling unfocused. And we're gonna go through each one of those feelings with our coaches. Winnie, what are your thoughts about feeling unfocused during these distressing times? Um, yeah, it's yeah. almost impossible uh, at some point to not feel unfocused, I think. Um, there's a lot coming at all of us, uh, and I've been reflecting on how globally we're all going through this thing, this pandemic, uh, and yet for each of us, uh, how we're being affected and how we're managing it and dealing with it, and maybe what triggers we're experiencing are all very different. Uh, so that can lead us to, um, and, and not only that, but it's just overwhelming, right? It's just overwhelming um, if you're dealing with children and homeschooling them, if you're dealing with sick loved ones, if you're dealing with um, maybe your own health and your own work situation, whether that's now you're super busy or whether that means that maybe you've lost your job. So there are certainly a wide range of um, emotions and feelings going on. And another thing that I've been reflecting on is when you think about unfocused and you think about what that means to me is being productive or not productive. And I think in some ways our society and maybe, you know, the, you know, if, if we're all, um, uh, I assume maybe we've all, we're all living in America or we're all Americans. Um, maybe we have different cultures that we're bringing to that, but there's an expectation that we should be productive and focused, like maybe all the time. And I think in some ways, um, when we're unfocused and we're telling ourselves that we shouldn't be unfocused, sometimes that's counterproductive. And maybe we can figure out ways that we can find, maybe time box our unfocused um, uh, time and say, you know what, I'm just not gonna be focused right now. Uh, and I'm gonna do something that I love, like you know, baking a cake uh, or spending time with my children or going for a walk. Um, so I think in some ways being unfocused, it's about being easy on yourself um, and, and then maybe uh, times in which you want to be focused, can you do something for 30 minutes and get through it and then maybe move on to something else? So those are just some thoughts that I've been thinking about um, when it comes to being unfocused. Thank you. Terry, what are you hearing from your clients about being unfocused and how are you helping them through that? Yeah, um, I'll again ditto what, what Winnie is certainly saying. And um, as, as, as Winnie said, I think that we feel, well, because we're working from home, that shouldn't change how we behave. Mm. Um, we should and should, that's a key word. We should be focused. We should be doing our work. We're getting a paycheck. Therefore, we should be doing whatever. And I think this is a time to give oneself permission to be unfocused. And to say, you know, and to, to label it and to say, you know, I'm not productive right now. Right. Again, it's about the kids or um, there are a lot of things that can take our attention away at this moment. If, again, as Winnie said, we've got kids, we've got loved ones. Are, am I healthy? Am I able to go to the grocery store? Am I able to go out for walks? Um, am I going to lose my job? Um, is it even going to be there when I get back? Is there going to be an income? So there's so much that we can think about. And I think the key is definitely choice, which is a very big word for me and which I always bring my clients back to. You've got a choice. You could do A or you could do B. And the choice is the one that 
really serves you in the moment um, and how you want to be with, with that choice. I think that's very helpful, very interesting. So I'd like to invite all the women in our gallery today. If you um, have any responses to that or any questions to this, as we go through each one of these feelings, you know, please virtually raise your hand. Um, I can't see everybody, so don't wave to me too much. I might miss you, but you can send me a chat as well. Um, and we're happy to open the dialogue with you and the coaches and, and hear what's on everybody's minds. Let's move on to feeling vulnerable. And 7% of us said we're vulnerable, but I suspect there's a mm -hmm. lot more vulnerable mm -hmm. feelings out there and there's mm -hmm. a lot more vulnerability mm -hmm. given all the things that we're all challenged with right, right now. And Terry, why don't you lead us off on this? You know, how do you counsel your clients around feeling vulnerable right now? Yeah, interesting. I was surprised by the 7%. Um, so what I find with clients is people think of vulnerability as a weakness. They think that, oh, I can't be vulnerable um, because that I think is what they've learned. It's a learned behavior. And yet vulnerability is actually a strength. It's about being courageous. It's about taking risk, which I think everybody on this call probably does in a lot of ways. And I don't know if anyone has read or heard of Brene Brown, but she is an expert on vulnerability and shame. And I have learned so much, as have my clients, from this. And when I work with my clients around vulnerability, they really get to see, oh, wow. It is a strength. It's not a weakness because, you know, people also look at the word failure and they think failure, what a horrible word. Well, you know, there's no such thing as failure. It's only feedback. Mm -hmm. And so these are words that people buy into in very negative ways and we are all vulnerable at this point. This is a collective vulnerability, this <laughs> pandemic. And everyone is feeling vulnerable. Again, where are they? What's going to happen? Are they going to get sick if they go out, if they go to the grocery store? Certainly going to the grocery store or going out, people feel vulnerable. They've got masks on and gloves on. And um, I, I would really have everybody really look at that word and see, even if they don't want to divulge it to anyone else, that we're all feeling vulnerable, no matter who we are. We all may be put together and look together and all of us on, on this Zoom chat, but every one of us is feeling that. And it's, it's looking at it in a different light with a different perspective that it does take courage to go into that ring arena every day, which here is getting up and being part of this or going to work every day. And if we fail at something, well, it's about getting back up and being vulnerable the next day and going back into that arena. That's the person that ultimately is the most successful. Thank you, Terry. I'd like to just um, to share with you a comment um, that one of the women in our gallery um, wrote in. She said, I love the idea of allowing the unfocused time rather than trying to control all of it all of the time. And I think that's, uh, that's really, really true. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we're so programmed to try and control everything um, from our personal lives to our professional lives and our social lives. Um, and so I'm, I'm glad that you heard that and that that was helpful to you. So moving on a little bit more conversation about vulnerability, Winnie, what are your thoughts about that? How might you frame that with your clients? Well, I, I definitely would echo what Terry was saying, you know, that vulnerability can be a strength. Although it's interesting, the comment that you just shared with us, Abby, from the, one of the participants, you know, that it's maybe okay to be unfocused some of the time or it's okay not to be focused all the time. And maybe vulnerability 
accessibility falls into that same category, right? Mm -hmm. Because in some ways, um, where can we find ways where we can be safe and be vulnerable? Mm -hmm. um, and in some ways, where do we need to be stronger? Um, and where are we pulling from to gain that strength? Um, in some ways, making sure that we're pulling from the right things can help us in our vulnerability. Um, you know, aside from the epidemic and everything that we're going through uh, with, this, with this crisis, uh, I was just talking to one of my clients, uh, and one of the things that she actually really struggles with is showing her vulnerability. Mm -hmm. uh, because in some ways, sometimes uh, her trying to hide her vulnerability sometimes becomes a weakness because she's trying to be strong. Mm -hmm. uh, and so trying to figure out that mix, maybe especially as women, um, where can we be vulnerable um, and, yet be, and, and be true to ourselves and yet make sure that we're getting the, um, the help that we need from the right people at the right time. What are some of the sources for that type of help, Lenny? Um, well, I think definitely like who do you feel safe with? Um, who are the people that you feel you can sort of let your hair down and be completely vulnerable with? Share, you know, your sorrows and your grief and your feelings. Um, obviously, um, sharing your joys, but making sure that you're getting fed. Everyone's different. Sometimes it's exercise, mindfulness, you know, relationships, certainly. Um, just having time alone or really being able to connect with people. A question just came in or a comment just came in. Um, I am finding that my employees really want and need total honesty and transparency. Mm -hmm. Will mm -hmm. there be layoffs? Mm -hmm. Hopefully not, but maybe depending on how long this goes on, for example. Is there a point at which this level of honesty can become counterproductive? Mm -hmm. So Winnie, why don't you yeah. jump on that since you have the screen at the moment? Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, it's a great question. Um, when people are going through a lot of change, that's an opportunity when people um, get triggered and they get nervous about things. Different people get nervous about different things. Um, and I think that transparency, you know, as your participant, as the participant mentioned, as much as you can give that, that, give that transparency. I think that when you don't know the answer, it's better to say, I don't know, uh, and to talk about that than to try to make things up or, or try to um, say things that are not going to be, you're going to be counterproductive. But I think the question is, you know, when can I, maybe the question is when should I um, not be as transparent as, or when can transparency be harmful? Um, and I think in some ways maybe saying um, less than more when it comes to a point at which you think it might be harmful in a way that that's not going to be productive. Um, so that's, a, that's another way to think of it. But as much as you can, um, I would encourage transparency when possible. So this question came from someone with a very senior position, but I'm wondering, you know, there are a lot of women that are in managerial roles all up and down the ranks. And in some ways, each of us is a leader. Um, yes. And certainly if we're not a leader, we have the opportunity to demonstrate leadership skills. So Terry, let me pass it to you a moment. You know, what's your feeling and what would be your advice about being transparent, being honest, and showing those leadership skills all up and down the hierarchy? You know, one of the things that I believe is we all are leaders in our own way, no matter where you are on the scale. And um, I definitely believe that, again, vulnerability comes with being totally transparent, being willing to step into that arena of whatever comes up. And as, as Winnie said, um, I am a firm believer in transparency and being um, authentic in how you talk to and deal with people, especially today. People are looking for that Again, as Winnie said, that safety. Mm -hmm. If you're going to lie or you're going to kind of hem and haw, that's not going to instill a lot of safety or trust. And trust is a very big word that I think everyone is looking for today. Certainly my clients and how they manage people. Um, and so, again, it's showing up in a way that is authentic, that has compassion, 
that has trust and that people can feel safe. And no matter what the conversation is, because being vulnerable is being willing to have those hard conversations. It's not just the soft conversations. What if you have to have a very hard conversation? It's where you come from that's going to shift how that conversation is heard. Thank you. So let's go back to the poll a moment. The next feeling is courageous. And 9% of us said that we were feeling courageous during this time. Winnie, want to tackle that? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's interesting because when I think about courageous at this time, I actually think about, for some reason, the thing that I think about is really um, innovation. Because in some ways, for us to be courageous right now, we're actually having to step out and maybe do different things than we've done before. Um, maybe this overlaps a little bit into energized and challenged, but I think that if we feel courageous, we're in a position where we can maybe um, try something different. Uh, this sort of this pandemic has uh, caused all of us to be in vulnerable situations and situations that we're not familiar with. Mm -hmm. uh, and in some ways that sort of levels things out a bit uh, and gives us an opportunity to do things that maybe we wouldn't have done before or try new things. Um, so that's what I think of, and I'm wondering, you know, what the women on this call think about when they think about courageous. I know Terry's also going to speak about her vision of that too, but um, anyway, so that's, that's kind of what I, what, what are my thoughts? Terry? Yeah, um, so I think courageous kind of threads through every one of these feelings, right? Um, if, if it was the glue for all of them. Um, certainly courageous is part of vulnerability um, and courageous is being willing to have the courage to be where we are today no matter what the fear is no matter how scary this is and to have the courage to figure out whether it's, as Winnie said, create innovation, you know, creative, um, or what, you know, asking the question, what opportunities can come out of this for me? Mm -hmm. What can I learn from this about myself, right? About where can I grow here? I'm, I'm by myself. What am I seeing about myself? What am I learning? What, what am I not happy with? What am I happy with? <laughs> so having the courage to really be self-aware and to be able to feel everything that we've spoken about, feel safe when it's not safe to trust when we don't feel trusted. Um, and yes, it, you know, it's easy for us to sit here and to talk about how what we have with our clients, but you know, everyone out there, I am sure is having their own feelings about all of these emotions. And I'm hoping that this discussion today is really stirring up different ways of looking at things. One different way of looking at this, I heard somebody say, and I won't get this quote exactly right, but it said that crisis is less of a teacher of how to be resilient and how to be resourceful. And it's more of um, surfacing and mm -hmm. exposing who can function mm -hmm. in a crisis mm -hmm. and who can't. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm wondering, you know, where that fits in being vulnerable and courageous. Winnie, what do you think about that? Well, it's interesting because I was um, in some ways already thinking about the next set of um, feelings there in terms of energized and challenge. But I guess I think about action, you know, like what action do I want to take? Maybe this also goes back to what Terry's been saying about what, what choices do I have in front of me? Um, what's my current mindset about myself and my situation? 
and what actions do I have within me to be able to move forward? Um, we don't, all of us don't have a, maybe a lot of choices, but there are some choices that we do have. And what are those choices where I can expend my vulnerability, my courageousness to, um, you know, help other people, help my employees move forward, um, you know, help them stay focused and motivated. Um, you know, how do I balance between my own feelings and how I'm doing as a leader and what's happening with my employees and what's going on with them? Um, and that doesn't even take into consideration what's happening with my family and my loved ones. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's a lot that um, I'm assuming that these women, you know, everyone here is um, are juggling. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what what choices can you make? What actions can you prioritize to make uh, to feel like you're moving forward and you're making a difference? Well, I think perfectly apropos of that is a comment that just came in. And, and Terry, maybe you can respond to this. And she says, when I think about being courageous, I think about truly taking ownership over what I can control mm -hmm. and finding empowerment in that. Mm -hmm. I am in control of how I take care of myself mm -hmm. each day through sleep, diet, exercise, hygiene. I am in control of it and how I reach out to peers and clients and check in on how they're doing. I'm in control of it and how I share new ideas and I am in control of it and how in how I seek out growth opportunities like this call. Hmm. Thank you for yes, joining us. That's you. great. Yeah, great. that's great. She, that lady must have been reading my mind um, because one of the things I always work with on clients is what do we have control over and what don't we have control over? We don't have control over the pandemic. Wish we could uh, and what, and the crisis it has caused. What we do have control over is how we come to this. That's what we have control over. How are we going with our own emotions, with our own feelings? How are we going to work with our teams? How are we going to deal with our loved ones? How are we going to deal with sick ones? Um, that's what we have control over how we come to this and what we are going to choose to do every day and every minute of the day. And that's, that's choice. And when we can control how we come to everything, that's a turning point. And it takes clients a lot to figure that out because we all want to control something. We want to control other people. We want to control situations. I'm a big control freak. <laughs> um, but you can't control the world. But what we can control is how we show up, how we be, and how we walk in the world. I think that's great advice. Here's another comment that came in. What's the best way to balance the sensitivity for the situation while not letting up on expectations of the people mm. that report to you? Winnie, you want to take that one? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think that's a great yeah. one. Yeah. I think, um, strangely enough, I think that many people actually want to continue to be held to a high standard, even in the midst of this you know, crisis that we're in and, and the distractions that come with it. Um, but at the same time, there has to be um, and, and probably needs to be some kind of empathy and, and flexibility around that. Um, and so I think that in some ways, you know, as leaders, uh, what you want to do is you really want to be tuned into what's happening with each one of your employees. What's happening with <laughs> the person? Uh, where are they at? What, what's getting in their way? Uh, what's distracting them? What motivates them? What, what are they really looking for to, to be able to move forward? Uh, and I think really being in touch with each one of your employees and being able to understand what they need from you uh, in order to stay focused, um, keep the bar high, but also, again, be flexible and be empathetic to what they're dealing with and how they're moving through those things. Terry, you have some thoughts on that? Yeah. Yeah. Um... I love the word flexible because that seems to be a key word today, being adaptable, being flexible, not being rigid. And certainly, again, in these times, more than usual, adapt being, you know, we're in a very 
uncertain, uncomfortable, and disruptive business landscape. And that was here even before the pandemic. And learning how to, um, a blog I did, Dance on Shifting Sands, during these times is very important for leaders and for employees and for teams. Everyone has to kind of shift gears when necessary and being adaptable and flexible um, certainly can help in, in, in what you do as a leader and how you want to demonstrate how you show up to your team, people, whatever it is you're working with. Terry, so, there's a follow-up question to this. How do you deal with employees that take advantage of the flexibility mm -hmm. and empathy being given to them? Good question. Wow. Um, that's interesting. You know, you would hope in these times that wouldn't be something that would face people, you know, what, but you know, the, the, it is, what does that mean to this person? Take advantage of what is it that they're doing or they feel or perceive they're doing that, that makes someone think they're taking advantage of it. Hmm. I, I don't, I don't know the answer. You know, it's interesting in because I was just thinking even before um, the participant offered that question, which is a really good one that in some ways this is an opportunity while we're all sort of at home <laughs> trying to figure out work and trying to figure out how to do this um, to get closer to our employees and get closer to people that work with us in ways that maybe we wouldn't being in the same, you know, co-located co together. Uh, and so understanding kind of what Terry was saying, understanding um, what's going on, how are they taking advantage of the empathy and flexibility um, what's underneath that, you know, dig around, uh, in that, ask that employee some really good questions to make sure that first of all, you care about them, even if they're maybe taking advantage, but also that you are still going to hold them up to a, to, to the same standard that right. you would, even if this wasn't happening. So I think those kinds of conversations, um, you know, they might be difficult, they might be easy, but having those one-on-one -on -one conversations with your employees and really getting to know them and what's happening underneath, I think is gonna be critical to answering that question. I once heard someone say, there's no such thing as procrastination. Procrastination mm -hmm. is the manifestation of something else. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid I can't do this. I don't mm -hmm. have the tools. I don't have enough time. So there's something else going on that's happening inside that is manifesting itself in a, an act of procrastination. And I'm wondering if maybe, you know, this woman is feeling, or several of us, you know, when we're looking at how our employees are functioning, that it may appear as if they're not engaged or they're taking advantage, but maybe there's something else going mm -hmm. on that's causing them not to show up in the way we would expect them. Terry, what do you think about that? Yeah, um, again, um, I, you know, the word expectation, um, which I was just reading about, is we may have our own expectations of what we want to see. Others may have other expectations of, of what, what they want. And, you know, as Winnie said, if a leader or somebody feels that, well, you know, it's raising the bar, well, somebody else might not have that expectation. Um, what does that mean? And I, I, you know, again, what Winnie said, I think these are times to have those hard conversations with people. If somebody isn't showing up in a way that you perceive they should be or that they need to be, that's when the hard conversation comes in, to talk to them again, to find out what's going on underneath because you know their words procrastination and you know uh, other things their words and we look at that oh she's procrastinating oh she's not showing up in the way she should um, so what's under that what's really going on and that's a hard conversation mm -hmm. to yeah. have um, and but and that's 
what leadership is. True leadership is being willing to get into the arena whenever necessary and to have those conversations, no matter how difficult. And it comes to how are you framing the conversation? That's key. Are you being rah, 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 or are you really opening yourself up to having a genuine, authentic conversation that allows for somebody to have a look and not judging them? That's, that's very interesting. Um, here's another question that's come in, slightly different uh, take on this. Um, I'm trying to encourage my employees to take vacation even though they cannot go anywhere. What does your ideal vacation look like when you are basically home and cannot really go anywhere? <laughs> Boy, that answer has got to be very different person to person. <laughs> go ahead, Witty. Go ahead, Witty. You're up to it. So is the, question, is, is the question, what would be, what, what's the ideal vacation? Or is it like, how do you encourage your employees to, <laughs> to take vacation? I think both of those questions mm -hmm. are in there. Okay. Yeah, that's so interesting. Um, I, I uh, first of all, <laughs> you know, I can see some people really wanting to take vacation right now, even if that means like, you know, again, being in their house and taking mm -hmm. up uh, piano lessons or, you know, taking up the piano mm -hmm. or, you know, um, doing something that you've never done before or painting or I don't know, you know, something fun. Um, but other people, maybe they desperately need to work right now uh, to keep their mind off of their worries. So I think it really does depend on the person. Um, and I guess it depends on your motivation as to why you want them to take vacation, right, right. whether they really need it. And you think them taking some time off and taking a step back would be actually right. uh, healthy for them. Mm -hmm. uh, or if there is a policy you know, reason why you'd maybe want them to do that. So I guess it kind of depends on what your motivation is. Um, right. But maybe even helping that employee think through what they could do and how it could be useful for them and what it could look like for them to be on vacation during this time. Mm. So somebody t um, sent us a note that says, um, we are doing daily sales meetings, which many of our AEs feel is too much. Mm. And they feel like it's a roll call. Any mm. tips on how to keep our team engaged and energized during these times? Mm. So I think that goes to the expectation piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's your expectation? What are our expectations as leaders and managers? What is the team's expectation? How do we get these things to merge? And I would, I would question, are these things merging well in the old normal times? Yeah. You know, how were you leading that team then? What were mm -hmm. their concerns about how the team was being structured in the meetings then? And what are you bringing forward that maybe you shouldn't? And what should you be leaving behind or redoing? Um, Terry, you want to jump on that one? Yeah. Um... Again, I think that this is the new norm, right? It's not same, doing business same old, same old. Um, and it's trying to, again, balance that landscape of how do you work with your teams and lead during these times? Um, maybe a good, you know, asking a lot of good questions about, gee, guys, what would we like to see today? How would we like to engage? But getting feedback mm -hmm. from people on it, maybe even a daily basis on uh, getting a consensus on, on how everybody's doing, taking a temperature on how people are doing and also, you know, being inclusive in this whole process for them. Well, I think that's, you know, as leaders, that can certainly make you feel vulnerable because that's giving a lot of power away. And yeah, I think people yes. have to really consider, you know, what does that really mean? Um, one of our participants wrote in um, with regard to addressing their um, employees that we should address the issue directly. I need you to be doing blank. You are doing blank. 
what do you need from me to be able to meet my expectations? So I think there's a, a good segue there into what you're talking about. Winnie, what's your thoughts about that? Yeah, I think um, one of the things that's really important is in that um, I'm expecting you to do this, mm -hmm. you know, that, that sort of dialogue is I think what's really important is to think about what behaviors what are the specifics, you know, to say, you know, I want you to, you know, I want you to get this done on time. Um, I want this to be a great report. Um, you know, those things are not helpful. Uh, you need to be as specific as possible. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to talk about specifically how maybe even you want them to show up. Um, I want you to, you know, when you get on a call, I want you to, there to be a video. I want you to be looking at me in the eye. Um, I want you to be um, sharing. Uh, what you've learned. Um, I want you to be able to talk to other people about what you've been doing and how you've been learning it. So whatever it is, you know, be specific, be as specific as you can and also talk about how it can help you. You know, I like that, you know, idea, um, Abby, that you mentioned, whatever the participant had said about, you know, um, this is what I expect and why, but talk a little bit more about how that will help you. Um, when you do your job, I can do my job better and therefore, you know, our team is going to do well. So kind of expand that beyond just that person or even just you, if you can. Abby, and Terry, I, yeah. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just lob another one out because it's all connected and then I'd like you to pick it up from here. Um, this participant says, I feel the need to always remain positive and put on a brave face. Uh, Is right. this a benefit to my team or does it seem to not be authentic? My team seems annoyed with the glass half full attitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And this goes back to being authentic, being willing to let your hair down, being willing to let your team see that you are vulnerable, that you, you don't have all the answers <clears throat> all the time, that when what I have, I know from the clients I have worked with, when we're willing to be empathetic and use a lot of our emotional intelligence skills, our soft skills, and to be vulnerable, that gives teams permission to open up. It gives them permission to say, wow, okay, here's what I'm thinking. If somebody is putting on this brave face and going out there and when the team is not feeling that way, that's not mirroring what's going on. And the other word that I wanted to bring in was if there was ever a time for good communication skills, it is this time. Because most people don't, I mean, I work a lot with clients on their communication skills and most people just talk. They don't really think about their message. How is it coming up, getting across? Um, and, you know, if ever, the, again, if ever there was a time to be willing to let your hair down or drop the veil and to be vulnerable and to say, you know, guys, I'm having a hard time also. And we're in it together. What can we do to create what we need to create here? What's the opportunity for us? Um, and so this is, this is a test for everybody on vulnerability. <laughs> Winnie, what are your thoughts? Um, I think that uh, there is a lot of um, usefulness in being able to share, share how you're feeling. I mean, I guess if you really are feeling like the glass is half full all the time, uh, you also don't want to pretend that it isn't. <laughs> uh, but if you are feeling um, a certain way, uh, you know, and it feels, gosh, today is just a hard day. It's raining outside, you know, I'm just feeling down or I'm feeling just sort of distracted or whatever it is, um, to be able to just share that, that in some ways it's just going back to what Terry was saying, it validates other people's feelings, mm -hmm. it validates that it's okay to feel that way. 
And yet we're still going to move on with the day, right? We're still mm -hmm. going to, mm -hmm. you know, we're still going to do what we have to do. We're still going to get done, you know, the goals that really have to get done today. Um, but, um, but I think having, being a rah-rah all the time, um, maybe, you know, I think Terry's point can, can push people away in a way that, um, you know, creates distance. And at this time you want to bring people as, as close as you can, um, and be authentic. But again, the work still has to get done. So figuring out how to balance right. that. You know, when I hear you, Winnie, it makes me think one for all and all for one. Mm -hmm. And there, are, there yeah. are a lot of women from my team on the call today. And that's the feeling that I'm certainly trying to bring mm -hmm. and foster right. for all of yeah. us because yeah. we're all having hard days. I certainly am having some hard days. And, but, you know, we're so strong when we're together and when we yeah. work together and we shore each other up when each one of us needs it. And so one for right. all and all for one, that's, that's, that's my motto for this. And I hope right. my team is feeling that. Yeah, we're uh, all in this together. We are. Another question came in, to the point of vulnerability, there is an excellent TED Talk uh, mm -hmm. by Brie Brown on vulnerability uh, Brown. and courage. Right. Mm -hmm. So am I saying her name that? It's not Brene. Brene. It's Brene, Brene Brown. And Brene her, te Brown. her TED Talk set her off on her path. It's amazing. Her books are incredible. I just will share if somebody's anyone's interested. She started a podcast called Unlocking Us. And her first one was about... Uh, FFT, which is first fucking times, <laughs> pardon me, but it's, it's great. And she's so inspirational and has done so much great work that I encourage people to really look at her TED Talk. That's great. And we love you being authentic, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> this is my FFT on a Zoom interactive All of call, us, so all of us. Is. We're all having FFT moments these days. Um, getting back to the conversation about vacation, um, this is a, an interesting uh, additional point here. Taking vacation is good for my team's mental health. And from a purely business standpoint, it would be financially and logistically disastrous to allow everyone in a company to push off their vacations to the last part of the year. Oh, you know, that's when we're all point. hoping everything is going to rebound. And frankly, um, you know, we're going to need our people to have their resources and to be mm. strong and healthy and motivated because we're going to be working harder than ever when business comes pouring right. back in. So right. maybe this is a good time for people to figure out how to take a vacation. <laughs> uh, I'm wondering a great point. what you think yeah. about that. Winnie? Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, it's, it's a really interesting point to try to figure out how to balance everyone's uh, out time. And in some ways, maybe that's a motivation. Again, depending on the person, maybe the motivation is take this time, accept sort of the, the pause that we're all on. Mm -hmm. uh, and knowing that when hopefully we go off pause, maybe it won't be exactly the same, but it'll be different than it is now. Uh, where, you know, to, your, to this participant's point, um, that we can then fully engage uh, and really bring everything that we need to to the table because now is the time to um, you know continue with business in ways that we can't now. So I think that's a that's a really interesting point. And maybe the appeal is we're going to need you when we're all up and running. Uh, and so take again, accept the pause as it is now. Um, find something to do that will energize you and and give you that mental health boost that you need, knowing that it's going to come where we're going to really need you full force. And to yeah. that point about feeling energized and challenged, I do want to call out that 49% of right. our yeah. attendees today in the poll said that they were feeling energized and challenged. So Terry, what do you think about that? You know, how is that feeling manifesting itself among your clients? What are you seeing about well, that? Well, um, you know, they're, they're kind of diametrically a little opposed, right? If you feel energized, you're feeling great, you're feeling fulfilled, maybe. Um, energized takes on a lot of different faces. Everyone feels different about feeling energized. I think clients that are able to get through the day and get accomplished what they want uh, with themselves, with their teams, you know, at the end of the day, they, you know, everything went well. They feel energized. They feel good. Um, I also think that being able to live your core values, whatever they are, and knowing that you're living them and not suppressing them, 
but really adhering to them, that can be energizing. Um, when we feel challenged, I think, again, comes to what can I do in this situation? What's, so the question would be, what's challenging me? What would, what would it be for everybody? You know, clients, it could be my meetings got canceled. I'm, I'm, I'm putting a big program together and it's gone on the back burner and this is a huge program. So, you know, we look at how can you kind of take steps to hopefully figure out how you can at least make some headway into that particular issue. Um, so we all feel challenged and I think that challenge can be energizing in a way because you get to look at, okay, this is what's challenging me and how do I shift gears and change perspectives and change my mindset that, wow, I overcame that challenge. Well, that's energizing too. So even though it looks like it's two faces of a coin, um, they can kind of help each other in a way. And it's oh, very interesting. Yeah. That's very interesting. Winnie? Well, the clients that I'm working with right now, um, I think the ones who are feeling energized and challenged right now um, are really excited about serving their, their clients uh, in ways that are different than, than before. Uh, so, you know, if their, if their clients are needing them in different ways than, than before this happened, uh, they're really excited about it. They're energized by that. They're, they're feeling like, you know, what can I do to help my clients uh, in this situation? Yet at the same time, uh, I think there's a watch out so that we don't get to the point where we get drained. So how can we, you know, as leaders uh, serve and, get, and, and energize, and, and while we're energized, you know, serve our clients, do new things, step up in ways that maybe we, we wouldn't have had to before. And at the same time, how do we continue to maintain that energy and maintain that uh, given probably everything that's going on for us? So as a follow-up question to that, um, there's a question that says, how can I access my strengths when I'm mm. feeling challenged during mm. this disruptive time? Mm. And I think that's a really fair question. Yeah. Terry? Um, so that's certainly one of the things that I do work with clients on. I ask them to look at what are their strengths? And, you know, when they have to think about it and they have to really dig deep to see, gee, where are my strengths? then they can access them and they can pull them up. One of my strengths is, vulner uh, is I won't say vulnerability, is um, dealing with people. I'm very good at dealing with people. Well, there you go. That's a way for them to say, okay, I have to deal with my team now. Here's a perfect place for me to access that strength. Uh, and whatever their strengths are, to be aware of your strengths. So when you need them and when you, you know, and looking at, okay, in the past, maybe I accessed this strength in the past and go back and look at, gee, when I access this strength, this is what it did for me. And it's a reminder for them to say, oh, I can carry that forward and I can now use that strength here. I think that's very helpful. Lindy, what's your thought about that? Um, when I think about accessing your strengths during a challenging time, um, I try to think back, and I, and I work with clients to do the same thing, to think back about on situations in which you enjoyed. What are situations at work, and maybe even outside of work, that you really felt energized, actually, where you really felt um, like time passed by quickly, you didn't even notice, um, you know, you were in a situation where, uh, you know, you, you didn't even, you didn't even think about what you were doing because you were so engrossed in what you were doing. So think about those times. Uh, and then those are usually your strengths. Those are the things that you're really good at, the things that you enjoy. Sometimes we're good at things that we don't enjoy. Uh, and sometimes we, um, you know, maybe even get stuck in jobs where we don't enjoy certain things, uh, but we're good at it. 
Uh, but trying to figure out how to separate those out um, and then really writing those down and thinking about those situations in which you have done those things. Uh, and then back to your question really is um, thinking about are there situations where I can apply these strengths now, even though the landscape of my life has changed? Um, where, what are some ways in which I can use my strengths, maybe in ways that I haven't before? So thinking about it like that. So that's, that's also very, very helpful, I think, and very interesting. It makes me think about a lot of things. So we're coming up on the top of the hour. I want to share with you one, one last comment that came in. And then, uh, Vic, I'm going to ask you for the closing slide with the coach's contact information again. So um, this participant says, to Terry's point about uh, what do we do during this challenging time, I personally have been speaking and preaching to both clients and family that while school is canceled, plans and vacations are canceled, and holiday plans are canceled, conversations are not canceled. <laughs> Reading is not canceled. Mm -hmm. Playing music is not canceled. Mm -hmm. And learning is not canceled. Okay. And I think that um, I think we can all agree upon that. And I think that's a wonderful way to, uh, to finish up today's mm -hmm. conversation. Uh, Vic, would you bring up the, the closing slide for us? Right. Beautiful. So here's uh, Winnie and, and Terry's contact information again. And I want to remind you that they've each offered a pro bono coaching session for one of the women, for any of the women that are joining today's session. So please feel, allowed to, feel free to reach out to them. I want to thank Winnie and Terry so, so much for your time and your energy, your expertise, your guidance, your wisdom. Um, it's so invaluable to all of us at this time. And I also want to thank our friends at Wide Orbit for generously underwriting the Next Women program and making sessions like this possible. Just a reminder, we will be sending a recording of today's session in the next day or so. Um, and when we do that, we're also going to send you a very, very short SurveyMonkey questionnaire to learn a little more about how this was helpful to you, how you enjoyed it, and what might be helpful to you in the future. So for all of us at TVB Next Women, on behalf of Winnie and Terry, I want to wish you all a safe and healthy time, you, your friends, your family, your colleagues, and your teams. Be well. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>